welcome to our Girl Day at UT Austin High School programming. So excited to have you join us today or to be watching afterwards. We have some fabulous STEM role models joining us today. And I'm excited to let you hear from them and to hear their stories and to have time to ask them questions. My name is Trisha Berry. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the executive director for women in STEM at the University of Texas at Austin. And again, we're excited to have you join us today. I'm going to let our fabulous panelists introduce themselves, and I'll start with a, a one question for them after they've introduced themselves, but then again, we're going to turn it over to you, the participants. So my first uh, little bit for them is to have them each introduce themselves, and they'll share their, their name and their hometown and what their STEM degree is in and what they're currently doing and maybe a hobby uh, or something that you all do outside of the workplace outside of your your STEM world. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll start with with Linda. Linda, can you kick us off? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Linda Mitchell. I have been in the uh, Texas area here for about eight years now. Um, my hometown is probably Hawaii, Mililani, Hawaii. Um, as my dad was assigned to headquarters Pacific Air Forces for his last assignment in the Air Force. I, uh, I managed to uh, study some biology and then psychology while in undergrad at uh, Miami of Ohio, um, at which time I decided to join the Air Force and follow my father's footsteps. Um, was a communications and information officer um, and also enjoyed working some policy and IT uh, customer service issues at the Pentagon. I mainly was in charge of cell phones and giving them out to our customers and helping them if they needed to talk from one place to another, whether it be on a plane to the ground or using a satellite communicator of some sort, um, I would basically help them provide uh, that means of communication so that we could connect the people who needed to talk to each other and the form of an emergency or just everyday communications. Um, I uh, basically ended up uh, working toward a master's of science in administration with a focus in information resource management, uh, which I use now as a policy uh, specialist in dealing with HR systems. I'm a civilian working with the Department of the Air Force. Uh, I've had about 10 years of civilian, 10 years in the military. Um, and outside of the STEM world, I like to uh, work with uh, gardening and I like to explore museums with my kids. I have two girls and my older daughter is actually going to UT this fall. So we're really excited. That's awesome. I think that's about it for me. Thanks. Thank you, Linda. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Let's flip over to Priscilla. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Priscilla Narofsky. Um, I am also, I grew up in the military. Um, I didn't join the military uh, whenever I grew up, but I grew up in uh, several cities around the country as a Navy and Air Force kid. So I don't really claim a hometown. Um, so I usually tell people it's Austin because it was the only place that I ever chose to move to. Um, and I'm still living here after a couple assignments in a couple other places. Um, I've been in Austin for quite a while, so we will call Austin home. And I am also a Texas grad, so I got my degree in architectural engineering at UT, um, and I went into construction um, in the building industry rather than engineering, um, but I am now a project manager for Hensel Phelps, which is a nationwide general contractor, and we do large commercial projects um, in the education space, aviation, and anything really in between. Um, so I've got a lot of experience uh, in various buildings and I've done a few here in Austin that I'm really proud of, including um, the new Central Library, which is uh, downtown. And then also I just wrapped up the terminal expansion at the airport. So if you ever fly in or fly out of um, ABIA, um, make sure you go all the way to the east end and you can take a look at some of our work there. And um, what was the other question? Oh, what do I do outside of this, this world? Um, well, uh, 
a lot and also I do a lot in the construction world still, um, but I, I like to run. Um, I actually just ran a marathon yesterday, so I'm staying seated as much as possible. Um, but I, I love doing that, but I also really love um, just spending time with my family. I have two little boys. Um, they're two and five, and uh, we just like to go do things outside and check out different places around town, different parks, and just spend time together. So those are things I'm really passionate about and um, just kind of you know, showing them some, they love construction also and building. So um, it's really cool that I can, you know, explain what every single truck actually does um, more so than any other parent. So <laughs> that's me. That's awesome. And thank you for being with us after a marathon yesterday, um, seated or otherwise. <laughs> that wears me out just thinking about it. <laughs> I am tired. I bet. All right, let's turn it over to Annie. Hi everyone, my name is Annie Ambrita Rose and I am originally from Dallas, Texas, but my family's heritage is from Nigeria. And so after Dallas, I went to UT Austin for undergrad. I did chemical engineering there and um, worked as an engineer for probably about five, five to six years before getting my master's degree in business. And then since then, um, I've been um, kind of doing a combo of engineering and business and currently I work at Microsoft. And so Microsoft's mission is to empower every individual and organization in the planet to achieve more. And so specifically in my role, what I do is I'm a customer success account manager. And so I work in the education space. So I'm working with um, K-12 school districts, universities, um, and I'm helping them with their digital transformation journey. And so that can be anything from um, like devices, like, hey, what kind of laptops or you know, um, tablets are we going to um, give our students or faculty? Or it can be helping um, different departments like develop an app. Um, we helped one university develop a, a parking app, um, you know, to help find parking spots in the university. So it really varies. Um, and then outside of work, I love spending time um, doing exactly this community outreach, um, helping um, uh, give back and, and, and share my journey. Um, I also spend a lot of time with family and friends. I love traveling and I love to eat and uh, watching sports. And so that's about me. Awesome, thank you. Parking is always a challenge everywhere. That's a great app to have. La Jolla, let's hear from you. Hello, so I'm LaJoy Walker. I'm from Louisiana, small town in Louisiana. Um, and it's called Leesville. I tell people they do not have a Starbucks or a Target, but it is very community driven and a close knit environment. So I currently live in Houston, Texas. Um, I received my degree from Lamar University in mechanical engineering. So my family is in Beaumont. And so I decided to go to school there. Um, I started college when I was 15 and I did my internship and now full-time employment with DuPont. So DuPont is a science company, uh, also known in the petrochemical industry. And I work as a reliability consultant across North America. And I also work on global initiatives for foundational reliability and maintenance speed to value projects. So that is what I'm doing right now. I just spearheaded a company-wide dashboard to understand how every facility is doing in our area of work. And it has been a fun revelation and process. Um, outside of that, my hobby is this a community outreach as well, but in particular, I am a, a vocally trained recording artist. And so I teach music specifically for Christian and gospel music. I used to be a background vocalist and now I'm actually preparing to record my own album. Uh, aside from that, I teach children in music as well. And that is a little bit about me. Hey, LaJoy, you're going to have to send us your recording stuff when it's all ready so we can say, we knew her win, and we can 
play this back and say, see, we knew her win. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. And I love the smile when you're talking about your, your dashboard and your STEM work. So we'll come back to that. <laughs> Izzy, let's hear from you. Hi, Hello, I'm Izzy Hussain. And I've been listening to all these wonderful speakers. Oh my God, like <laughs> amazing. Love to hear music. Then coming from Air Force. Oh my goodness, what a wonderful panel we have. Well, I am an engineer by trade, but I'm doing uh, engineering management. I'm a senior engineering manager in Intel. So I do manage teams within the US and also across many other geos, which includes in Asia and also Latin America. So these are uh, the engineering teams and I'm very involved with day-to-day, uh, -day, everyday engineering, all the emerging technologies. I get super excited. So two of the two <laughs> new things that uh, my team is doing uh, along with myself, like there are multiple teams. One of the focus area is called uh, CXL. It's a new protocol, which is um, for um, future, uh, like it's an open source, meaning Intel started it, but now pretty much uh, all the high tech companies are on board. It is just going to be helping um, with all the CPU or any processor to smart NICs, accelerators, and pretty much all these Yoda bytes of artificial intelligence and machine learning applications you hear about. Uh, it's going to expedite that storage and um, it's a memory to people, memory extension as well as like making uh, all the things that get very widely used, you put them into this uh, cache coherent memory and it becomes, it's your performance becomes much higher. So I'm trying to make it simpler in words so you, I hope you understand. It's just um, making your life better because uh, there's so much data crunching happening with all the newer technologies. Our servers have to be very uh, efficient and high performance. So my team also works very closely with the Intel Xeon servers. These are the very big servers which crunch most of the data that even, I don't know, the one that we are using possibly, yes. So um, that's one area. And I also have a very keen interest on cybersecurity and security in general. So I do have teams who are um, into the security validation, they're security researchers and experts. So if you guys have interest in that, do let me know. And what was the question? Where am I from? I'm from Bangladesh. Uh, that's where uh, I was born, but uh, I traveled quite a bit. Uh, I did my uh, master's from Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, and um, that was in electrical and computer engineering. Then I started with Bell Labs in New Jersey. So it's been a wonderful journey. I've enjoyed every single bit of it. So <laughs> I'm sure girls and boys, whoever you're there, if you're interested, uh, and if you have a love or passion for it, for learning new things, making new technologies work, be uh, like uh, excited about all the future things that can happen. I think um, engineering, uh, anything related to STEM, I'm going to say is going to be awesome for you. I'm glad you guys wanted to join this webinar and uh, have all these, I'm sure all those wonderful questions are coming for us. <laughs> Outside work, I do quite a bit of things. Uh, I think now uh, I love to go to gym. <laughs> Whatever time I get outside work, I try to go to the gym and I have some big birds. I have five peacocks at home. So they keep me pretty busy. <laughs> uh, so that, and, and I do paint when I get time, which is quite rare, but I would love to encourage that talent of mine also. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And I'm open for any questions you guys have. That's awesome. We may get peacock questions for you. Okay. That's definitely, that's definitely <laughs> I a do find that picture. That's awesome. Thank <laughs> that you. Awesome. Thank you. 
<laughs> well, thank you all for sharing a little bit of a, a glimpse into your world. So that's, that's awesome to hear the diversity of the experiences that we have and your hobbies and your interests outside of the STEM spaces. So I'm going to ask one question for you, and then we're going to turn it over to our participants for their questions. And I see there's one in the Q&A already, and hopefully we'll get some more coming in. And I always have lots of questions. But let's talk a little bit more about, about your pathway. So some of you were sharing a little bit about um, the work that you do and, and the work that you are, are currently on, maybe a project or something. But maybe talk a little bit more about what, what helped you decide your STEM major? What made you decide to go in the pathway that, that you did? Did you always know you wanted to be doing what you're doing right now? Um, bumps in the road, struggles, or has it been just a super easy process to get to where you are? Tell me a little bit more about your pathway, why you chose your STEM major, and uh, maybe a little bit more about what you do in, in your work or a project that you want to tell us about that's been exciting for you. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna skip, to skip around again this time. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with LaJoy to talk about her database. She was so excited talking about that. We're going to come back to you. Tell us about your STEM major. Why did you cho choose your STEM path? And then maybe talk a little bit more about the work that you do. So in regard to my path, I knew that I loved math. Um, I wasn't too crazy about physics. And so... I decided, I said, you know, I'm going to have to choose something where I want to graduate within four years and be able to start a career. I didn't want to have to go back to school afterward. So before I could take care of myself, honestly. And so with that in mind, I was deciphering between engineering and computer science. And I understood that I did not want to spend a lot of time programming. I actually wanted to be able to design or problem solve while being able to collaborate. And so with that, I chose mechanical engineering. Um, I did not know what I wanted to do when I first started college. And that was probably the one thing I stressed myself out of, about the most. Um, but the plan ended up, I mean, it ended up working out. And um, after that, I just, I understood the different disciplines for engineering. So what civil does, mechanical, electrical. And the good thing about that was when you first started engineering, you are exposed to each discipline. You learn more about what each discipline does, how they contribute to society. And that led me to my decision to confirm that I wanted to do mechanical engineering. With that, I know that I'm a person that gets bored easily. I like to work on things and then once I complete that, I wanna to go to the next thing. And so I saw those options within mechanical engineering for me. And once I joined my company, it aligned with what I wanted to do because I wanted to travel as a young woman. I wanted to be able to go different places, be exposed to different things. So with my role, I'm a consultant. So I was able to travel and work with each business sector within our company. And from that experience, I was able to learn more than um, entry-level engineers that were just particularly assigned to a plant location. And because of that, I was afforded the opportunity to lead different projects and now the project that I'm working on now. So when you consider an entire organization who's in 90 countries, um, each facility, each plant location is different. They all have different cultures. They have different assets. Some may be the same, some may be unique. And so we have these governing documents that help lead us in compared to subject matter experts and benchmarking tools for global industry standards. And so what I'm doing now is combining those global industry standards to the playing field of what our company is doing. How do we match up between those standards? And then with understanding where each plant site is, where each business is, we can develop a plan to lead us to having more value, meeting our year end goals, increasing productivity and sales. That's pretty cool. So you're helping the company and the employees in the company be able to see that bigger picture and how what they're doing is connecting to where the company wants to go. That's yes. Awesome. That's very cool. And I think your comment, um, I saw other nods about 
you know, not having really any idea um, exactly what your discipline is and what you might do with that degree at the end of the day and what, you know, that, that stress that sometimes can come with that, I think is, is part of most STEM majors. You're not quite sure what I'm doing and where I'm headed necessarily, but that problem solving and knowing that you want that to be a part of your world can kind of keep you going, right? Keep you, yes. keep you going and get you there in the end. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Izzy, you want to tell us a little bit more about your pathway? Okay. So yeah, for me, I loved math. I had a strong passion for anything uh, to do with STEM, I'm going to say. <laughs> and uh, I think it started from pretty early childhood. I enjoyed physics the most. I loved biology. Chemistry was one thing I wasn't too keen on it. Uh, just because I had to go to school and learn, but I did develop an interest in organic chemistry, but um, and uh, somewhat in, in, in organic, but not much other than that. So I knew I wanted to do something to do with um, where I can use my uh, mathematical brain. I wasn't great at coding, so wasn't sure if engineering is the right thing. I started with electrical engineering, uh, but I, I'm going to say I also took admission in med school <laughs> and uh, architecture. And so, but um, ended up with engineering. That's where I started. And I started liking electrical engineering and the different aspects, as Lahaya said, and you're saying you do not know much about it when you enter, as I was exploring. I thought, oh yeah, this is something I would like to do, but not everything, of course. They want to teach you everything in school, which is a good thing, <laughs> but uh, many things I knew, uh oh no, so that's okay if you guys find something, as I said, chemistry is, isn't something that I really loved, but I, I learned, and it just by learning, I developed some interest towards it, and Obviously, I uh, had to pass the course and do good. That was another reason. But uh, there will be many things within the path that you will like. And you have to just find that what it is and focus towards that. I think that's my, uh, uh, what should I say? That should be uh, what I'm going to recommend for all these young kids coming in. So try out, try different things. It's absolutely okay and you might just find something that you never thought that you like and that is where you'll find your heart is and you're suddenly going to excel if you find <laughs> where your passion and your heart is and it has to um, go with your talents obviously like if people are not interested in uh, calculation math many people are not and that's totally totally okay and probably then uh, engineering, you might struggle a little bit. There is quite a bit of things, which I was told by many of my friends, it's like, uh, it doesn't have the heart, which is untrue. It does. <laughs> so you can marry a, like uh, art and science and then do really well, or management and science. What I'm doing now, pretty much my work, I'm going to say, uh, apart from all this engineering things and the degrees and all the technical stuff, majority of my work is now psychology I'm going to say. <laughs> I've never taken a psychology class but to do management that's what you you have to motivate people make sure they are bringing in their 100 percent so things change over time and um, as you go you will find the right thing what is right for you but if you do have some interest on STEM try out you'll find <laughs> where your strengths are. And I think that's a, a good point both of you have made that you don't have to necessarily like all of the STEM classes that you take. And there's likely, no matter what you study in college and beyond, there's likely pieces of the work or the school or the classes, just like in elementary, middle and high school of things you, you like and things you don't. And so keeping keeping going and exploring and you find those those places where you fit. So, so thank you, Izzy, for sure. Um, good points on that. Sure, thank you. Priscilla, how about you? What made you head into your, your career pathway? Well, thank you for asking. Um, I 
share some similar sentiments that I, I definitely didn't know everything and didn't have it all figured out whenever I started out my degree. And to be honest, I still don't really know what I'm doing every single day, but I'm learning more and more about what is most important to me and um, what I want to accomplish. But um, I actually chose my major um, when I got to UT. I had originally thought that I was going to be uh, an aerospace engineer, pilot in the Air Force, and tried to become an astronaut one day. And that's what I told myself from when I was a little girl. And I don't really know where I came up with that idea, but I was very committed to it growing up and did what I could. I, and I eventually, uh, something didn't feel right in my gut whenever it came time to make the big decision. And I ended up turning down an appointment to the Air Force Academy. And um, because of that, that meant that I had to figure out how to pay for school. <laughs> so I ended up choosing um, one of the best state schools that we that I'd gotten into at UT and had a lot of opportunities there and aerospace engineering. So I could still go do that if I wanted to. And I stepped foot into one class and realized that I really wanted to make a different type of impact that involved people and um, my community. And it just didn't feel like the right place that I could fulfill that vision of what my future was. Um, I think it was a really good decision. Um, I ended up switching to architectural engineering. Uh, I'm sure aerospace engineering would have been great and it's probably the perfect fit for many others. But for me, it architectural engineering seemed to be the right place because I could still you know, exercise my passion in math and science, but also um, work with people and um, projects in the future that are very community-based and you know, could have an impact on myself and my family and the people around me. And that was something that um, I was very interested in doing in, in the built environment. So um, from there, I even learned more and more that as I got into the engineering disciplines and learned more about what engineering really is. And um, I felt like there was a piece missing that I really wanted to be um, more in the managerial space, um, similar to like, what Izzy was talking about, um, I could tell that my skills and passions were more in the relationships and um, putting together projects in that regard rather than the design direction. However, I still was very interested in learning and becoming an engineer and having that background so that I could have, I could relate to um, those members on my teams and um, really be able to speak the technical lingo and understand how everything goes together. Um, I ended up uh, getting an, a co-op internship uh, while I was at UT with Hensel Phelps, who I still work with today. And um, that was a great experience because I actually worked full time while I was in school. I basically took a whole semester off of traditional um, classes and I took a few classes online and in the evenings, but I was um, placed on a job site by my company and I worked like a regular intern for nine months straight. And that really exposed me to the building world. And um, I, I think I found the path that I really wanted to go down because I could, I could start seeing the tangible results of all of the drawings and ideas and documents and programs that we had. And it just, there was something really rewarding about, um, yes, hard work, um, figuring out how everything literally goes together and translating plans into reality. But the fact that I can walk up the stairs that I place the concrete on as an intern um, is really cool. And I don't know if I would have had the opportunity otherwise. So since then, um, you know, I've had the opportunity to build some really cool buildings that I mentioned before and work with some very talented and um, amazing people. Um, it's I, I agree. I think that I really should have focused more on some psychology electives while I was at UT. I definitely um, could have used those because, yes, I get to work with a lot of very intelligent and accomplished engineers and designers and managers and people from all walks of life, but there are even more walks of life that I spend a lot more time with, um, trades and 
people that are not in the building industry at all and clients and end users and the, the real people in the community that are gonna be living and working in these buildings and really understanding what everybody's stake and priorities are in the project has, has been something that I've enjoyed the most about this career. And I've, I've learned more and more as I've gotten to the roles that I'm in now that yes, you need to work hard and understand what you're doing and you know, do the best you can, of course, but it becomes less about what I'm doing every single day more about what everybody on my team and everybody that is involved in the project, what, what do they need to make sure that they're achieving their goals? And that's something that I'm trying to put more emphasis on in some of my um, less technical and, and maybe uh, non-traditional day-to-day work, things like this, just exposing people to, young people to, you know, new career types, new options, and getting involved with, in organizations. I'm, I'm working with the DEI um, organization within our company and trying to really understand what we can do to to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to be successful and support that in any way we can. And in the end, we'll add all of that up and we'll have great projects. And, uh, um, you know, I'll be really proud of whatever legacy I leave behind, even if it's not um, a building I can walk into, but if I can make sure everybody else really is proud of that project too, that, that would be the most rewarding thing. So that's a little bit about my path and I can go through the nitty gritty details. If any, anybody ever wants to talk construction, I could go all day. That's awesome. Well, I think, I think what you all have, have brought up are some of the, those key things that, that come into STEM work that we don't often emphasize or don't highlight a lot. We talk about the product or we talk about the tangible out output of our work, but not always that it takes the teamwork, it takes the communication, it takes all of this other part of it to understand what is it that we're doing and why, how is it going to make our world a better place, how are we going to design it in a way that's useful and beneficial, and how do we bring that diverse team together to make it happen, so all um, part of what makes us as STEM professionals also um, need to be proficient in communicating and those people skills and all of those pieces also. So you mentioned psychology. I'm gonna turn it over to Linda who actually has a little bit of background in that, but then is also working in the STEM spaces and HR systems, which is definitely related to people as well. So Linda, tell us, tell us about your STEM, STEM pathway. Well, thank you very much for the intro. Um, I started off when I was about 12 years old thinking that I wanted to serve as a medical doctor and I thought pre-med was the only way to go. I really wasn't uh, concerned about anything else because I was so uh, interested in helping people in a medical way if they were in need of something uh, cure or some therapy that could be provided. I wanted to get that to them as quickly as possible. So I started off as a health career explorer as a teenager, went to work in the summer times as a receptionist at the Naval Hospital in Okinawa, Japan, uh, where I was at the time um, in their uh, program for high school students uh, starting age 14, 15, uh, volunteered at a crisis center, um, also uh, did the things that you expect a pre-med student to do, basically, you know. Um, then I saw that in college, I really hadn't explored anything other than pre-med. So I said, well, wait a minute, there's a whole world out there. I'm not so sure this is exactly what I want to do. And I became fascinated with how people choose to do the things they do, like what motivates them? How do you encourage them to meet their full potential? And uh, I really would like to find a way to make that happen if I meet somebody to let them know, hey, you've got this whole skill set, you've got these talents and interests. You know, did you think about this? Did you think about that? In fact, when I was a lieutenant, one of the folks that worked with me in the IT field um, had just graduated from the Air Force Academy, but I told him I was going to uh, Alabama State University uh, to pursue uh, organic chemistry course. And he said, really, you can do that? I said, absolutely, yeah, there's nothing stopping you. So he's a doctor, he's a practicing physician today because I 
let him know that, hey, it's it's possible you could pursue it too. Um, I don't want to take credit. Obviously, he's put in thousands of hours on his own time and taking the MCAT, but I kind of planted a little seed maybe, perhaps. I'll take credit for that. Um, so um, while I was in the Air Force, I became an EMT. I volunteered at a pharmacy you know, off base uh, called the Arlington Free Clinic. Um, that was the only person that I know of who uh, didn't make it at September 11, um, the gal I had worked with there, uh, because I was at the building at the time of the impact. Um, and I tried to go back in to help people using my EMT skills um, because there was such a problem with getting the word out you know, to be evacuated. Um, there were five different sectors in the building and there really wasn't any one quick way to let everybody know to come into the very center of the building because that was where in the middle of the building it would have been the safest from the impact. If you consider um, the, the plane hitting on the outside, you really needed to get everybody on the inside in the middle to get away from that perimeter of the facility. Um, but the three-star officer, the general who I talked with, you know, explained that there really hadn't been a scenario set up for that. So as a IT person establishing plans and policy, I was able to work uh, afterwards to develop a better way to get the word out should anything like that ever happen again. Um, you know, not only have an instant message pop up on everybody's screen, but then, you know, some kind of an audio announcement, a loudspeaker through the PA system, and then just routine um, re regular drills, you know, which generally is done, you know, fire drills were generally held um, in most places of the military. And of course, when I first got there, I had asked, hey guys, when was the last time you had a fire drill? But they just looked at me like I was a foreigner uh, or someone who didn't know what was going on because they just said, look, we don't do fire drills here. We're not the base level. Come on, Captain, what do you think you're doing trying to ask us to do something like that? You know, I was made fun of actually to suggest something as silly as a fire drill, but um, you know, that's okay. Um, I, we were then eventually realizing that it would have been a good idea to have had that evacuation uh, exercise and just to get an idea of where to go. Um, uh, because that event really just turned into a lot of different things for me personally. Um, it put my whole career path on a derailment as I had secured a spot to go to a pre-med post -back program through Goucher College. I had secured a spot to do a one-year uh, post baccalaureate degree program, which I would have used to get into med school. And then the Air Force would have funded my way for four years of med school. And then I would have been a doctor in the Air Force. Well, that was my plan. Um, however, um, even though I had gotten the okay for my commander to do that, um, when September 11 happened, uh, I wasn't allowed to go to school. They said, look, we need you here. Sorry, too bad. And then before I knew it, I was too old to go to med school. So um, here I am, I'm not a doctor, but um, you know, those things happen and um, you just learn to deal with it. You roll with the punches. Uh, my psychology degree has served me in that I try to understand if a customer needs something, how they might ask or where they might come from in the context and in the situation so that I can reach out to them. And uh, we can develop a web page that's alphabetized to go with A through Z. If they need a cell phone, put that under the C's for cell phone and then cross-reference it under the P's for the phones and maybe talk, talking through a phone, put those under a T, you know, those kinds of things. Make it easy, make it simple, as easy as, as you can make it. Um, that's pretty much been my uh, mantra or my mission is to help in customer service as a federal civilian most recently, but uh, before that, in the military, just, just make it easy for people to get from point A to point B. Um, and if you use psychology, great. If you use a variety of other sciences, even more power to you. Um, I don't really have a very technical background and uh, I'm certainly not an engineer, but I appreciate you all uh, inviting me, you know, and I appreciate the, the time. So, so I'll get off the, the stage here and, and let someone else go.
Thanks. And, and you're using that, that STEM background and that STEM thinking in a different way to make our world a better place. So I think that, um, and, I, and Priscilla talked about this too, right? Our, our plans kind of change. We can think about the work that we're doing maybe in a different way. Um, and so that's part of, part of our STEM backgrounds. Um, no matter what those degrees are, it gives us those, those skill sets to be able to pivot and to still use that problem solving in a way, um, no matter what we're doing. So thank you, Linda. That's great. So thank you. Annie, let's hear from you. Yes, so I love Linda how you mentioned planting a seed because I mean that's why we're all here right to share our stories and hopefully encourage you to consider a um, career in STEM and as you can tell from everyone who's speaking our pathways all look very different and you know that's okay right. So for me, um, all throughout like elementary and middle school, I knew I, I wanted to do something where I could help people. And I pretty much was like, I'll either be a teacher or a psychologist. Like those were the two things that I kind of was thinking. And it wasn't until high school that um, I, it was a teacher who was like, you know, you're really good in math and science. And like, that's like a, a field that um, you could go into engineering with. And it's something that's challenging and, and it's hard. There's not a lot of people who, you know, can do it, but I, th I think you can. And so just like kind of encouraging me to consider engineering. And um, UT was having a high school engineering camp through one of their departments. And so I was fortunate enough to go to this um, week long engineering camp at UT and I loved it. I was sold. Like I got to see all the different engineering disciplines, um, learn about them, see practicing engineers who came talk to us. You know, I got to have little in, an insight into what an engineering career could actually look like. And so from that, I, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I knew that I wanted to choose an engineering discipline that was more broad. And so I ended up choosing chemical engineering. And so um, what I really love about engineers, one of the favorite um, easy, simplistic definitions I always use is that engineers use math and science to help people to solve problems, right? Or to solve problems and help people. And so sometimes like earlier on in, in, in my life, I was focused on the, the help people and didn't realize that one of the ways I could do that is through you know, an engineering career. And then with chemical engineering, um, when I went through my, my courses and, and, and classwork, there's different um, roles that you can get into, right? Different industries. And um, being in Texas, uh, oil and gas is, is really huge. The energy industry is really huge. So I was um, uh, considering a career in that. And um, uh, one thing that I will say that engineering really helped me is, and, and we've kind of talked about this all throughout, is having a problem solving toolkit, right? That you walk away from and, and you spend like, for me, the courses were really challenging. So you spend all this time learning, but you're developing, you're building a muscle, building a skill that you can use for the rest of your life. And you can use it in a variety of roles. And so um, with a chemical engineer um, at the basis, they're an engineer that is going to take raw materials, raw ingredients, they're going to use some type of chemical process um, and systems to be able to turn it into a useful product. Um, someone once used the analogy of a chef, and I love that example because, right, we're all familiar, let's say we want to make um, a nice big hearty soup, you're going to get a bunch of, you know, um, raw carrots, uh, potatoes, like whatever veggies, uh, meat, what have you, you're going to put it in a system, that's your pot, you change the, the temperature, or maybe it's um, uh, you're adding pressure, some sort of, you know, um, um, uh, uh, system change is going on. And then at the end, you have this um, wonderful, delicious soup. But then what's the point of the soup if no one's actually eating it? Or, or what, is, what is the soup for? And so as I continued on my career, I realized that I really loved moving more and more to the end and figuring out like, hey, what are we making this product or this technology for? And who are we helping? Do they need to be helped in this way? How can we help them better? And like focusing more on the, the, the problem solving for the, the end user, the end customer. And so um, for so my I'll pre quickly kind of go through the different roles that I've had right after undergrad. I really wanted to be able to use my technical skill set. So I did a production engineering role where we're looking at, hey, how much um, are, we, are we able to, how much oil and gas are we able to produce? How can we optimize the production? Um, what are the types of um, 
uh, procedures that we can do to increase um, production. So that's one area. And then I moved to say um, to another role where it was more on the business development side. That one was called a reservoir engineer. And with that role, it's, hey, we, we're not producing right now, but we do want to. How do we plan? How do we set up um, this area so that we can do that? And that was my one of my first roles where I got to start um, developing a project management skill set. And with that skill set, you're learning how to coordinate, um, how to work with different disciplines um, and helping move everyone along um, towards your common goal. And so um, after that, I kind of really loved the fact that I was getting to see all these different things from um, a high level and I wanted to continue to develop my um, business um, skill set. So that's when I got my master's in business. And then when I came back into um, the industry, I wanted to have a role where, you know, I could do both. So I was doing um, like a business development advisor, working with engineers to help us with our big capital projects. And then um, re uh, recently now with my role at Microsoft, um, I've been really focused on, like I mentioned, who's the end user, who's the consumer, and how can we help them with their um, uh, product or with their process that they're going through. And so all throughout these different roles, the one thing that I'm keeping um, right next to me, you know, at, at my hip is my problem solving, my analytical toolkit. And that's allowing me to be able to um, look at an opportunity, a situation, a problem, and think through it analytically, right? And how can I help this go faster, more efficient, um, cheaper, or how can we do this in a completely different way? But I always, um, uh, tribute my engineering undergrad experience for laying that foundation. And so I would say if you're considering um, multiple different career paths in STEM or, or something else and you're not sure which one, um, one of the ways that helped me make the decision was someone was saying, if you have both the passion and the talent or the drive for both of them, maybe look at considering um, which one will allow you to pivot you know, in the future. And so no matter what kind of role that I do, whenever someone sees that I have an engineering um, undergrad degree, it never disqualifies me. Oftentimes it's always like, oh, that's great. That's a bonus, that's an add. So it's easier for me to move another way. And some other, some um, disciplines, it's more uh, niche and it may be a little bit harder to navigate. Um, but yeah, so just to, to, to summarize and wrap it up, like. I love to look at my life now in seasons and in chapters because it really helps me not um, think that, okay, I have to do this for the rest of my life, right? Like, but just right now, what am I interested in? What do I want to learn? And how can I use um, uh, either my, un my undergrad degree or do I need to do more skilling? But how can I do it for this point in time? Because we're all going to change our mind. We're all going to do something different and that's okay. That's awesome. And I, I think I think you all, in a sense, answered the one question. If anyone has other questions, please throw them in the, the Q&A or in the chat. But the, the question that had come in was, how can chemical engineering lead to medical research without going to medical school? And I think all of you kind of answered that in a way, in the, the ways that you talked about your career paths um, and how you maybe got the degree in one thing, and then you are taking that into the spaces that you want to, to be in then you don't necessarily have to have that advanced degree or that medical degree in order to still navigate into those, those spaces, especially research, which can happen in all kinds of places. Does anyone have anything else that they might wanna add in response to that question? How can chemical engineering, or I'll extend that to biomedical, mechanical, any of the engineering or STEM disciplines, how can you get into to research if you don't wanna go to med school or maybe even to go get your PhD? Well, I, I didn't go to med school and I, I didn't do um, a master's level research, but I did do research when I was an undergrad um, through the women engineering program. And so even though I was majoring in chemical engineering, the research I was doing was supporting the civil engineering department and environmental engineering. And so I think ultimately what it is for most, at least for sure for undergrad, they were looking for who has the interest and who has um, um, these certain skill sets. So they looked at different courses that I was taking in undergrad that can help with the research. And so I know for medical research, a lot of times um, if you're going to med school, you want to go to med school so you can have a license to be able to practice as a physician 
which means seeing patients, right? But if you're doing research, you don't necessarily need to actually see um, patients. So then it's just about what kind of technical background do you have to bring? And so chemical is definitely one that could align. Um, but let's say if somebody wants to do medical research on something that is more um, like telemetry or something more electronic in nature, then maybe somebody with a electrical engineering major might be a better fit for that role. So I think it's, um, uh, or I think the main thing to focus on is the fact that with um, a STEM background, you, you are able to still go into, you know, whatever industry you want. It's, and, and if it's research specifically, then it might just be dependent on what area of research that you want to um, get involved in. Awesome, thank you, Annie. Well, we are past time, so I wanna make sure that we are respectful of everyone, everyone's time. Thank you, thank you all for joining in. These stories that you shared and your career pathways, I know are sparking. We talked about the spark, sparking interest, hopefully in our participants. And I appreciate you all giving time to join in our Girl Day at UT Austin virtual 2022 programming for our high school students. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.